We're gonna do some gentle stretching across the chest and heart today. So this will be a level one or an all levels gentle class. And what I'd like you to have is maybe a towel or a thin blanket that you can roll up. I think a towel works really well. I often will use one. Um, and if you have a couple of yoga blocks, that's great. And if you don't, you might even stack some books to make it work out, but definitely yoga blocks will be a lot better. And the way that I'm going to have you start is by taking your towel or blanket and folding it. And then once you have it folded, I'd like you to roll it up and actually with a little bit of width, right? So you want it a little wider than your shoulders. So just choose the width that works for you and then roll the blanket according to that. And then you'll place your blanket onto your mat the way across, so horizontally. And when you lie back, I'd actually like your shoulder blades supported by that blanket. So those of you who have sensitive necks might want a second blanket or towel underneath the back of your head. And then you'll bend your elbows, separate your feet about hip width apart, and let your knees rest upon each other. And we'll just be here taking long, deep breaths. The first part of this practice will just be opening breaths. And the kind of breathing that we'll practice here is called Veloma Pranayama or sometimes Durga Pranayama. It's breathing in three parts. So as you exhale, release your breath out. Feel for your sternum gently pressing forward in toward your belly. Feel for your bottom ribs really squeezing down. And then through your nose, inhale your breath all the way in. Try to press the back of your ribs gently into that blanket support so you feel the expansion at the back of your heart. Like you're breathing into the earth underneath you. And then again, exhale, squeezing the bottom of your sternum, squeezing your front floating ribs slightly down. Through your nose, inhale your breath all the way in. And this time, try to go for complete fullness and hold your breath just lightly at the top. Try not to grip up around your fullness. Keep your shoulders soft. And then exhale your breath all the way out when you need to. And so we're going to try to breathe just a little bit in. Sip in a little bit of breath through your nose. Sip in a little bit more. Now you can feel those front floating ribs rising. Then sip into that same place of fullness and hold. Exhale it all the way out. Feel those front floating ribs closing, the bottom of the sternum drawing down. Let's do that again. Just a little bit of breath, sip it in through the nose and pause. Then a little bit more to feel those front floating ribs rising and pause. Draw your breath all the way in until you're completely full and feel for that tendency to grip around your fullness. Keep your jaw soft, your eyes soft, your shoulders soft. Exhale it out when you need to. You don't need to wait for my cue. You can always exhale when you need. You can even hold longer if you'd like. Proper Veloma Pranayama. Through your nose, inhale one third of your breath. Imagine filling the basin of your pelvis and pause there. Two thirds of the breath, sip it in. Imagine the chamber of the belly, that deep opening just underneath your ribs. And then that last third, right around the heart circulatory system. Hold full if you can. And when you need to, exhale your breath all the way out, consciously drawing those front floating ribs down, consciously squeezing the bottom of your sternum towards your belly button. Do it again. Inhale about a third of your breath. Feel for the grounding action of prana at the pelvis. Press into the sitting bones. Sip in another third and pause. Feel it circulating at the belly center, the seat of the jewels, Manipura chakra. And then that last third, inhale, rising the energy through to the heart. Feel it circulating into the lungs. 
sending that energy into the whole body. Exhale it out when you need. Inhale, one third. Pause. Rooting action. Apana, your energy draws into your bones. Inhale, another third. Into the deep of the belly. When prana enters the body, this is where it goes first. To Manipura. Then inhale that last third and send it up to the heart, where it distributes everywhere. You can feel the skin vibrating with aliveness. And exhale it out. So breathe in three parts. Take at least three to five more rounds on your own. Inhaling to pause, one third. Inhaling to pause, two thirds. Inhaling to hold absolutely full. Exploring that fullness and then letting the breath go when you need to. Don't push your edges. Stay within your comfort level. You don't want to get yourself gasping for air here. You want to be very gentle with the movement of prana. According to one of the really beautiful systems of yoga, prana draws into our body from cosmic prana, which is ultimate life force, the big picture energy. You might even say all that is. And it draws into the individual and differentiates right at the bindu chakra at the top of the head. From there, it draws straight into that manipura, into the belly center. And the belly center, just under the rib cage and above the belly button, is also a place of deep intelligence. The only place we have more nerve muscles, more nerves than here, is the brain. So more nerves only in the brain. You might even think of all of the stars in the solar system. That's about how many nerves you have in your belly, deep intelligence. And from there, the first place prana branches is in two directions, flowing downward to root us and flowing upward to diffuse through the heart. So into apana and prana, the movement of it in the body that gives us vitality. Maybe you're on your last round, be gentle with yourself if you need breaks. And when you're done, go to breathing normally and naturally, softening at your shoulders. Then walk your feet to about hip width apart. Interlace your hands behind your head to give your head some support. And with your next exhalation, squeeze the bottom of your front floating ribs and the bottom of your sternum down into your belly and follow that action by picking your head up. So you're not just straining your neck to lift your head, you're actually moving from the rib cage. And once you're up, reach your fingertips forward, stretch. And we'll do this a few times. Hands behind the head, inhale, let your head tip back, but not all the way to the ground. So just floating the head, lengthen. And as you exhale, start with the rib cage, start with the front of the sternum, lower it down and let the ribs lift you forward. Reach into your fingertips, Stretch long there. Feel the upper abdominals holding you. And one more time, inhale, hands behind the head, lengthen back. Go for length more than extension, so go back more than down. And with that exhalation again, it's the rib cage that moves. The head just follows. Reach your fingertips forward, and this time, take a hold of the backs of your thighs. You can pick up your feet if you need to, to come forward. If that didn't feel good, you can also roll to one side, press a hand into the ground, and press yourself up. Then you'll move your blanket out of the way. This is where you'll want to take a block. So what we just prepped for, we will deepen. So a block will go on the ground. Again, you can stack some books here. It's, it's a little bit less ideal, but it works. If you have these super thin blocks, you might even place two next to each other. But all you really need is one stack up off of the ground. And you'll lie back. So this is not quite a supported Supta Baddha Konasana or a heart bench. It's a little bit different because we'll go right into interlacing the hands under the head. 
rather than having another set of blocks supporting your head. So these blocks just support the shoulder blades and you want to find a place at about the mid shoulder blade with the hands behind your head. So a little bit more extreme than the blanket, a little bit more dense than the blanket. Press into your feet and I like to have my feet hip width apart, maybe even a little bit wider and my feet on the ground. And as you exhale again, you'll take that same action of curling forward. Now you can feel the pressure of your blocks or your books at that band just between your shoulder blades. Pick up your hips, curl your tailbone forward and set your hips back down. You don't want a dramatic arch of your tailbone into the earth because that could jam up your low back. So find that length, that smoothing out at the bottom of your pelvis first. Then once you feel that, tip over a little bit to the left. You're not crunching so much. All you're really doing is rotating on the pressure of the blocks. And then tip over to the right. Feeling that pressure at kind of the bottom tip of the shoulder blades. Let's do that one more time over to the left. Use your hands to support your head so your head can be a little bit heavy. And then over to the right. And then you'll come back to center. We'll start with the hips. You pick up and take your hips forward another inch and then you wiggle yourself down one notch, maybe half an inch at most an inch on your shoulder blades. Kind of like you're climbing up the ladder of the spine, you'll see. So you're in a new notch in a new position, somewhere just above where you were a moment ago. And again, tip over to the left. And tip over straight across that band to the right, finding a horizontal band behind the heart, behind the shoulder blades, again to the left. Again to the right. Bring yourself to center. Again, wiggle yourself down a notch, adjust your pelvis forward. You're somewhere at the middle shoulder blade now. Tip over to the left. This is where we really start to feel the massage action. And over to the right. Your head is heavy in your hands and your head is tipping back. You might even press one elbow, the elbow that you're turning toward, a little bit deeper toward the ground. So you get that squeeze of your elbow down. A little bit more stretch across the front of the chest and go over to the right. Again, pressing the elbow down. Come through center. Let's try for another notch. Climbing up the ladder of the spine. You're somewhere in the upper portion of the shoulder blades. Move your pelvis forward to adjust. Maybe even move your feet forward a little bit. Let your head tip back. And the movement might be slightly smaller as you tip over to the left. And then tip over to the right. We're massaging that band. Tip over to the left. Go slowly to feel your knots. We hold a lot of tension here at the back of the heart. Over to the right. I don't know if you have one more notch to go. If it starts to feel precarious, don't go there. Just stay where you are. There's probably plenty of interesting sensation wherever you are. If you have that last notch, move into it. Shift forward a little. Let your head tip back and the movement's quite small. Over to the left. Press into the shoulder and over to the right. You don't want it to be uncomfortable. You just want it to be kind of a deep pressure massage. As little discomfort as you can. You know the difference between a massage and pain. Don't go into pain, keep it at that massage. Go over to the left and then over to the right. And the way to get out of this is by dropping your forearms to the ground and pressing into your elbows. Let your chin hang onto your chest for just a second. Straighten your legs forward. Press into your legs. Push down through your sitting bones. Push down through your leg bones. And then press into your hands and come straight up through the center line. Move all props out of the way. Sit upright 
and come into any comfortable seated position. So some of you may need that blanket still underneath your sitting bones. So as you inhale, stretch your fingertips slightly wide, hovering off the ground. Lift up through the top of your head. As you exhale, press into your right hand. Inhale to sweep your left arm up and overhead. Exhale, come back through center. Go for that reach through your fingertips. Then the left hand comes down and inhale, sweep your right arm overhead. Exhale back through center, fingertips reach, right hand lowers. Inhale, left arm reaches. Exhale through center, there's that press, left hand down, inhale, right arm over. Little modification now, come through center, reach, right hand down, left arm over, pause. As you inhale, bend your top elbow, squeeze your shoulder blades together and roll your heart toward the ceiling. Shoulder blades hug into the spine. Keep your shoulder heads away from your ears so you're not scrunching your neck. You're actually lengthening your shoulder heads away from your ears. And then go back to the side. And come back through center. Exhale, left hand down. Inhale, right arm over. Bend that top elbow and again, squeeze the elbow back. It's almost as though the entire forearm from the elbow to the back of the hand are pushing into an invisible surface behind you. Shoulder blades squeeze, shoulder heads draw away from the ears. Breathe into the side waist and maybe even press the hip down. Send your arm overhead again and come back to center. Take a breath in, exhale, reach into your fingertips. One more variation, hand down, stretch your left arm up and over. Bend your top elbow, squeeze. As you exhale, pull your belly button back. Start to round your entire spine and send your left fingertips toward your right wrist. So like you're holding a giant beach ball, you want to feel that negative space that you're hugging, pulling your heart back from your breastbone. One more time. Inhale, squeeze your elbow back. Push from the elbow to the back of the hand into the space behind your heart. And as you exhale, roll around. Pull your belly button back. Let your head be soft and heavy. Left fingertips are reaching actively toward the right wrist. And then come back to center. Come up. Exhale, fingertips reach. Left hand down, right arm overhead. Inhale, bend the elbow. Push the back of the forearm back. Exhale like you're rolling that giant beach ball around the front of your heart. Press your sternum back. Draw your belly button back and hug that negative space, right fingertips to the left wrist. One more time, inhale, squeeze open, roll your heart straight up, push the forearm back. And exhale, round around that imaginary sphere. Head is heavy. Come through center, reach your arm overhead, and then release. Send your fingertips to hover just off the ground. This time, just tip your right ear toward your shoulder. Turn that right palm to face up and bring your hand to the top of your head. You're not pulling your head down. The hand is just a little bit of a weight. Draw your left shoulder in circles and feel the stretch there. And then as you exhale, so you're not pushing your hand into your head, there's very light contact. You just roll your head to look down into your right hip and then move your hand to the back of your head, cupping your hand around the curve of your skull. Gentle breath in the left side of your throat. Don't move your head from this position. Keep your head as it is, but drop your hands down to your knees. Keep your head as it is. Drop your chin slowly, 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 slowly to your sternum. Your head is now hanging down the midline of the body. Let your chin try to press into your chest. And as you do that, keep lifting your spine. Keep lifting your rib cage toward your chin. Now take a full breath into the back of your heart. Give yourself a stretch there. And as you exhale, release. Take your fingertips wide. Drop your left ear toward your left shoulder. Turn your left palm to face up and then bring the hand light touch to the top of the head. 
just around the ear. It doesn't feel good to push onto the ear, but let the fingers kind of cup around the ear. And then micro move that right shoulder a little bit to know where it is in your body. We are all so deeply unique where in your body you feel the stretch in the most sustaining way. Again, almost no press. Use the turn of your head to readjust your hand and then let your hand cup the back of your skull. A gentle drawing up on that hairline can feel good here. Again, you want to think of keeping your head right where it is. Don't lift it up. Chin stays heavy. Release your hands to your knees. So you're just following gravity with your chin. Let your chin start to drop down into your chest. Keep your chin locked down into your chest and press your shoulders slightly back. Then inhale and think of your back ribs lifting up. Hold your breath absolutely full. Let your shoulders get very heavy so that your arm bones drop onto the sides of your chest, just the direct sides. And when you need to exhale, exhale it out and release. Inhale, sweep your thumbs out and up like you're carving a little V. You're not going straight overhead, you're going out to the sides a little bit. Lift up into those thumbs. Stay lifted, turn your thumbs forward and then back so your palms just roll the opposite direction. Start to sweep your arms in a huge circle back behind you. And once your hands go all the way back, imagine you could high five someone just above you, push back through your fingertips and then up. Try not to roll your shoulder heads forward. So keep your shoulders back, but push your hands up. Bend your elbows back there. And I'll do this facing the opposite way. Bend your elbows back there and touch your fingertips together. Then slide your fingertips as high up the back of your spine as you can. Then release your fingertips back. Again, go into that high five. Roll your hands to face out. And sweep your arms back up into that V. As you exhale, touch your fingertips down the back of your head, sliding the hands down, down, down. As you inhale, sweep back up into that V. Exhale, internally rotate. So I have a friend that teaches this all the time. These are called swimmers. It opens the shoulders, it stabilizes the shoulders. You wanna go for that high five, hands press up. And then you'll bend your elbows so that your fingertips touch. Maybe they won't come there, but maybe they'll touch. And then you sweep your fingertips as high up your spine as you can without shrugging your shoulders. Keep your shoulders away from your ears. And again, press your hands back. You're probably building more heat than you think. Roll out from your shoulders and lift up into that Y. Bend your elbows. Keep your head over your spine so your head isn't pushing forward. Head is drawing a little bit back. Let's do it one more time. Inhale, lift up. Internally rotate at the shoulder heads and sweep back into extension. Press your hands up. Bend your elbows. Fingertips touch and they slide up and then press back, high five the ceiling, externally rotate, and then flex at the shoulders to lift up. Bend at your elbows, slip your fingertips down. This time interlace your hands behind your head, pull your elbows slightly forward, and let your head just gently press back. Come back to neutral, release your hands onto your knees. Give yourself a few shoulder rolls here. However many times you roll in one direction, go in the opposite direction also. And our last movement will be a simple cat-cow. If it's hard for you to come onto your hands and knees, you actually can do this seated. And yes, you can even be sitting up on a couch for this last part of the sequence. Then you can sit upright anywhere that's comfortable for you, so long as you're not tipping your spine back. You wanna feel that lift through your sacrum. So those of you that are seated, your hands will be on your knees. 
and you'll go into your cat cow seated with your hands on your knees. Those of you on your mat, come into a tabletop position and let's go into that cat cow here. Arch your back, inhale. Exhale, round your spine. Inhale to arch. Exhale to round. Inhale, arch. Exhale, round. We'll hold the rounded spine the next time that we get there. Press into the tops of your feet if you're in your tabletop. So push down through your feet. Pull your belly button up so powerfully that you can feel the frontal hip bones lifting up off the thigh bones. Keep that lift. Press down into the base of your thumbs. Squeeze your front ribs up toward the sky. And then take a child's pose. Toes will touch. Stack your hands on top of each other so that your head isn't hanging off your spine. You want your head more or less in line with your low back here. If you're seated on a couch, you might even come a little bit forward into a fold. And if you still have your rolled up blanket, one thing you can do if you're seated, so imagine I'm on a couch here, is you put your blanket across the front of your pelvis, right up against your belly, which should give you just a little bit of support as you fold forward and let your head go. So you're not hanging onto your hip flexors. You're giving yourself a little bit of that lift at those frontal hip bones as you curl in. Walk your fingertips over to the right. From child's pose or from that seated position, press down through your left sitting bone. Walk your fingertips over to the left, again, from child's pose or that seated position. Full breath. You're trying to access every little last part of your lungs. Come back through center. Wherever you are, start to roll up one bone at a time, stacking the bones of your spine, one on top of the other. The bones of the spine are so beautifully choreographed. They are thicker and wider at the bottom, thinner and narrower at the top. So you can feel this long, stabilizing pyramid holding you. Can you drop your shoulders away from your ears and listen to your heartbeat as it circulates into your body, your arms, your belly, Prana at the belly, rooting your hips down, lifting your heart up. Notice how alive your skin is, how warm and alive your hands are. When you're ready to rest, you can either lie back into a Shavasana and rest, or maybe you even stay seated into a brief meditation. I'll be here with you for another minute, following my breath with my awareness, feeling the miracle of that breath circulate through my lungs, and into my body. This body is a true miracle. It is creating stability, balance, homeostasis to the best of its ability at all times. We impose so many thought constructs and even emotional constructs onto our bodies. But the body itself is innately free. The photograph you have of your body is often 
a very different reality from the reality of your breath breathing and your skin opening, your eyes softening, the miracle of blood being created every second, the miracle of blood being destroyed every second, the miracle of regeneration that is happening so rapidly and so effectively that we can't even understand or catch a moment of that regeneration. Oh. We're creating two million red blood cells every second. That's just one thing. Feel that deep infusion in your body of trust and faith in its ability to work hard for you. Thank you for the practice. Ata Yoga Anushasana Yogas Chitta Vritti Nodaha. Here begins your practice with deep gratitude for yourself. Namaste.